Hey, Steve Soretsky here. As always, there are videos, or sorry, uh, blogs that go with this video. Uh, I want to touch on a few things. First off, uh, you know, what's going on in the market in the first couple weeks of March, what we're seeing, you know, early 2017 as we head into the spring market. Um, a little bit on, on some pre-sales that I'm, that I'm watching closely. And, um, you know, timing the market, I get a lot of people inquiring to me about, you know, what they should do with their real estate decisions, that sort of thing. So I want to touch on all sort of, you know, all three of those things. Um, and uh, actually, first and foremost, I want to start it off with the U.S. Federal Reserve hiking their interest rates uh, a couple days ago. What that means for Canada, their Vancouver real estate housing market. Uh, first off, we, you know... When the U.S. hikes, it uh, tends to push up their U.S. 10-year Treasury bond yields. Uh, Canadian bond yields tend to follow that as well. And so what we see is watch for the Canadian bond five-year yield. That is directly correlated. As those bond yields for that five-year Canadian government yield go up, uh, the, the five-year fixed-term mortgage rates follow that. Uh, the correlation is you know, it's spot on. So as those yields go up, so do fixed term mortgages. And obviously, you know, as fixed term mortgages become more and more expensive, people can afford less and less home, thus prices come down. Uh, so you want to know part of the reason why prices are sky high, obviously, you can look at uh, borrowing costs right now or historic lows, you know, you're looking at, you know, five year fix around 2.5, 2.6%. Uh, it really doesn't get any cheaper than that. So if we are truly in, if the US is calling for two more hikes in 2017, uh, that's something to definitely note. If that actually happens, how many hikes? Um, you know, that's a, a certainly a, a, a look, if you want to look at that in terms of where that can move things. Uh, follow that Canadian five-year bond yield. Uh, that'll tell you where uh, mortgage rates are going. Um, you know, with that being said, uh, what we're seeing here in early March, yes, sales are continuing, uh, you know, a downwards trend. That's what we've seen over the last six to seven months. You know, detached sales again for the first couple of weeks of March, year over year down 50%. Uh, you know, condos down 25, townhouses down, you know, 25% basically, give or take. Again, I'll put the link to that blog post uh, in the description. However, with that being said, you know, obviously there's a lot of emphasis put on sales. But what, what ultimately needs to happen is new listings need to pick up. So what we're seeing right now is that, yes, sales are, are dropping or they've dropped and they've basically, you know, they've, the new normal seems to be like detached sales 50% less than last year. That's like the new normal. Um, and condos down, townhouses down. That's like the new normal. But the thing is what we've seen over the last couple months now, starting in February, is that new listings are also following that. So new listings are also down you know, 30, 40, 50% year over year. So nobody is selling. Sellers are simply not selling. Uh, I don't know what, why that is. You know, it's only been going on for about a month and a half now. But if obviously, if that trend continues where we don't start to see an uptick in new listings, uh, that's going to keep prices where they're at uh, for the condo market that will keep pushing condo prices up because inventory is right now at historic lows. It's lower than it was last year. Um, and, you know, despite sales dropping off year over year, uh, Due to the lack of new listings, uh, that is pushing prices up. We still have a very high sales to active ratio. Um, so that's going to be the thing to really look for. So I've obviously put a huge emphasis again on sales, what they're doing. You know, they're for the detached market, they're tracking well below the 10 year average, but now we have new listings that are really falling off. So um, in order to get those inventory levels up, to push on prices, um, to give buyers, you know, uh, more, you know, more inventory, more things to choose from, um, you know, they need options. And so what happens in the condo market is basically every buyer runs into each other and they end up bidding each other up because there's simply no inventory. Uh, so you need to get those new listings up combined with sales coming down, which they are. Um, but again, a lot of that is you just got to get the new listings up. So, um, you know, with that being said, you know, people, again, because the inventory is so scarce, people start to look to, to uh, you know, new builds, new condos. Uh, and again, in 2015 and 2016, we smashed records here in Vancouver for new housing starts. Uh, a lot of that stuff has not come onto the market yet. It is coming closer to the end of 2017. We'll start to see a lot more stuff coming on here, uh, you know, in greater Vancouver. But... Uh, <laughs> 
what I'm seeing right now, is, uh, you know, there's a I, there's a project on Cambie in 37th, uh, just sold out in a matter of days or a week or whatever, uh, selling over $1,200 a square foot. So uh, these these pre-sales, in, in my opinion, are just, are they're just ripping people's eyeballs out right now. If you're buying a pre-sale, uh, I'd be cautious. I think that uh, you know we're seeing again some of the stuff on the east side. You know, it's it's going it's going way higher than it is because what the developers do is obviously they've paid a premium for the land over the last couple of years, um, so they got to they got to pull everything they can out of it. But when the market is so hot, when there's no inventory, um, you know they can basically charge what they want, and they also tend to price in you know future gains. So you're essentially you know you're paying twelve hundred a foot, and they say, oh well, yeah, by the time it completes in two years, it'll be worth you know twelve or thirteen hundred a foot. Um, that's a risky game. That's a speculative move, right? We don't know where prices are going to be in the next couple of years. You know, certainly over a long horizon, 10, 15 years, one would obviously assume that prices are going to be, you know, higher than they are today. But to, to put it in a couple of year window, I think, um, you know, you're paying a premium for these pre sales. I don't, I really don't see, in a lot of these buildings, I don't see the value right now in paying $1,200 a foot uh, to be on, you know, Camby and 37th or, you know, even further out. Um, you know, they're getting away with it. Um, I think people have become maybe complacent in terms of not analyzing. I mean, if you're looking at that from an investment standpoint, that's, you know, that's going to yield, yield a very negative cash flow uh, every single month. You know, you're looking at half a million dollars for, you know, a 400 square foot studio <laughs> on, you know, 37th and Canby or wherever, Mount Pleasant. Um, you know, these prices do not make sense to me. But uh, I don't know if that's a new norm, um, but that's you know something I would look for. Uh, again, with that being said, take everything I say with a grain of salt. Um, you know, make your own decisions if you find value there at twelve hundred dollars a foot. And then by all means, go ahead and pull the trigger. Um, but I get a lot of messages. You know, all probably on a weekly basis, a couple messages. People ask me, Steve, what should I do with the market? You know, I got this money. I'm ready to buy. Uh, is it a good time? That really is a personal decision. I cannot make that call for you. Uh, it really comes down to, you know, first of all, do you have the money? Do you find value in the market? You know, what's your situation? Are you renting? Are you tired of renting? Do you have a kid on the way? Uh, are you ready to settle down? Maybe you've been renting the last 10, 15, 20 years and you don't care. You know, you just wanna have some, some of your own roots. I don't know what that is or whether you want to you know, I have people that, you know, they want to sell and they want to rent for a year and wait for that buying opportunity in the next year or two years or whatever happens. Uh, and, you know, maybe take a bit of a gamble there. That is totally up to you. I don't think there's any right answer. I think it's a, a very, it comes down to very individual, um, you know, individual choice. Just to give you an example, I mean, obviously uh, for me, I tend to attract a lot of investors, a lot of or a lot of people that work in finance and in, you know in the investment world. So these are people that are you know highly educated on markets. Um, so a lot of them, I can give you an example. Um, you know, one guy that's been working in the financial markets for you know 30, 40 years, and you know, goes, Steve, you know, I'm probably buying into the top of the market here, but you know. It, for me, I just, I just need, you know, I want to have a place that I can live in for the next, you know, 15, 20 years here in Vancouver. I got a couple other residential real estates uh, across BC and, you know, I don't really care. I just want to, you know, set my roots here. I want to want a place for the, you know, for the summer when I retire, that sort of thing. Um, and so, you know, they, they don't really care. I got another guy that, uh, you know, has been renting for 10, 15 years and saved up this massive down payment knows he feels that it's maybe the top of the market um but again he's like i don't care i'm just gonna, i'm gonna live in here for the next 15 years and um you know i'm just tired of renting having to get up and move and etc i just want to plant my roots great by all means do your thing and then again I, you know i have other other clients that uh that read my stuff and they decide um that uh, they're gonna rent for the next year. They're gonna take up another one year rent and, and see where the market is. And you know, if it's up, great, you, you lost. Um, but you know, in a year, maybe there's a, there's a great buying opportunity and that is totally your decision. It really comes down to kind of your risk tolerance, um, your mindset. There's so many things going on in the world that for me, I cannot like, I cannot time the market for you. 
all I can do is educate you on what I see in the market. Uh, I like to try to look at global macro, um, you know, perspectives in terms of what influences the Vancouver real estate market. Obviously, I just talked about the Federal Reserve in the U.S. hiking their interest rates. Uh, that plays a factor. Uh, you want to look at the China. You know, a lot of a lot of uh, these financial guys look at China and say, they, "Man, they got a huge problem. They've amassed a massive amount, massive amounts of debt." Um, some people would argue. I know that there's uh, famous U.S. short sellers shorting the Chinese banks, um, thinking that they're going to have a liquidity problem in the next couple of years. Uh, but, you know that obviously influences, awfully influences it. Um, there's just a lot of uncertainty in the world right now, and so there's so many things. Obviously, you can even look as as uh, as minor as you know, as maybe as the micro scale. You can look at the upcoming provincial elections. Okay, like who gets in? I would argue that if the NDP gets in, that's probably bearish for the real estate market. Uh, the NDP is put a huge emphasis on affordable housing. Um, I think they're going to do probably everything they can to, to to cool prices, to probably bring them down further or whatever. Uh, and I would look at if Christy Clark and the Liberals get in, that's probably bullish for the real estate market. Uh, I would say that there's probably a good chance that I would say there's a, there's a good chance that you know uh, that that foreign buyers tax actually gets removed. Uh, you know, obviously the liberals have favored the real estate industry. Um, obviously, a lot of their donors are people in the real estate industry. So you know, if they get in, that could that could again. It, it, there's so many factors at play, and again, so that's why I cannot time the market for you. I can't tell you when when you should buy or when you shouldn't buy. Uh, all I like to do is educate people, give them uh, different different perspectives because I think that. What we saw, I mean, we can see it right now in Toronto, is there's there's like this mass hysteria, this this fear of missing out, where it's like if you don't get in now, like you'll never get in. Like buy, go buy two condos now for for your unborn child, and uh, you know maybe one day they'll have a place to live here in Toronto. Uh, it's crazy. There's always going to be opportunities. Uh, markets do not go up forever, so I just like to educate people that. That yes, certainly the Vancouver real estate market could keep going up, could see another leg up, but at some point, uh, you know, corrections do happen. Uh, you know, obviously, Vancouver I think is long overdue for one. Again, when that happens, how much is anyone's guess? But I think that it, you know, it's it's for me, it was just hard to see to see people you know engaging in 10, 15, 20, you know, multiple offers and uh, you know people just throwing money you know recklessly and. And uh, a lot of people in the industry saying, yeah, you got to get in now or you're never going to like, I think that is, is, is not the right message to be sending to people. Um, and I think if that's the case, you know, to, to over leverage yourself just so, you know, you can get in or you can, because you had that fear of missing out to, to over leverage yourself just to get into the market, uh, I think is a mistake. I think again, if you can afford it, if it makes sense for you, if you find that there's value, um, then by all means get in, but I don't like that message where people want to entice fear um, to make a real estate decision um, that people really can't handle at the end of the day. So that's been my whole premise, and I like to provide, again, not only the stats and the data for you to make an educated decision, but also to look at uh, global economic perspectives in terms of what is actually influencing the Vancouver real estate market and what can influence it in the future. Uh, so by all means, everybody make your own decision. Hope that help. Hope you enjoy uh, the new office. That's my my Joe Sackick signed jersey. <clears throat> and uh, that'll probably be in a few more videos. So hope that doesn't distract you. Anyways, guys, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. And we'll see you soon.